The Collectivist Security Organization, or CISO, is the primary defense force of humanity. If they are going to succeed in that goal, you are going to need to learn what tools they have and how to use them. Let's start off by going over the various personnel and armor you will be commanding. The Marine is the basic building block of any CISO outpost. They can set down beings to teleport base of structures and have a handy RPG if anyone else has a problem with those structures. Not the strongest on their own, but quite the force in groups. You will receive two of these at the beginning of any engagement to assist in constructing your outpost. The Special Ops is a support unit, specializing in keeping all infantry alive and anyone else's infantry dead. They also have a special equipment to see cloaked armor. Keep them safe, and they'll keep you safe. You will receive one of these at the start of any engagement for early defense and reconnaissance. These simple AI constructs are the bigger brothers of the Marine and the Base Building Department. They're also designed with a focus on ground and engagements. Once again, keep these in groups for best performance. For reconnaissance purposes, these all-terrain hovercraft come equipped with cloaking devices. They also boast enough firepower that we can use them to poke some holes in our enemy's lines when they aren't looking. A popular choice for beginning any engagement. Lances are your face against set and scout craft. They aren't particularly tough, but they're cheap and keep the skies clear. They can also stop those invincibility shields the Tech Force came up with from working, provided their capacitors are fully charged. In case you're wondering why you want to keep the skies clear, here's your answer. High powered plasma shorts out everything on the ground and does a number on the body, too. A few shots from that and almost nothing stays moving along. As a bonus, Tornards can detect cloaked enemies, meaning there is nowhere to hide. The 400 series beam tank is the mainstay of the CCO ground armor. As the name suggests, it is most suited for taking fire from everything else and giving it back with gusto. It can also give a pair of infantry a safe round of battle. As an added bonus, it can upgrade into... The Heavy Tank. This is a high-powered siege platform equipped with state-of-the-art ground air assault capabilities and can be retrofitted to nanite infect enemy combatants, making them into unwitting double agents. I know it sounds unhanded, but we need everything we can to win this war. Getting into one more restricted technology, we have the Magnetic Accelerator Railgun. In case you were wondering how it works, the answer is very effectively. At least against targets on the ground, all it has is a pea shooter for fighting off planes, which only poses a threat to passing birds. Much like the beam tank, it is also equipped with a fancy out of factory upgrade system. With a pair of these, you can make... A Twin Ma. As the name suggests, there's two Ma tanks stocked on top of one another. In terms of armament, nothing beats it on the ground. However, it does have less range than a standard Ma tank, Many commanders opt to stick to the basics. Now all this firepower takes resources, so this here mobile field base will keep you from wasting those resources. These are well-bit vehicles with good weapons, but their job is to keep everyone else alive. Take care of them so that your enemies don't. Another handy support tool is the Blackbird. It's faster and more powerful than the MFB, but won't take as much punishment or repair as quickly. Best use of their forces are quick strike forces. The pinnacle of the CISO Air Force is this heavy cruiser. These ships can tear apart any opposition easily, get to battle quickly, and still need one man to drive them. On top of that, they can load up a tactical nuclear warhead to drop anywhere. Of course, this requires upgrading your outposts, but with this sort of firepower, who can say no? These carriers are the last word in battle management. They can hold an entire squad, bring it into battle, and then show that squad up in their own field. Not only that, but that squad will get all of its dents and bruises fixed up whenever they're inside. However, due to their size, field teleporters and chronoporters don't have enough power to work on. Now that your mobile options are covered, let's go over the buildings that'll make up your outposts. The armory is the primary building, and rightly so. It equips our fine foot soldiers with the armor and weapons they need to fight, and allows our outposts to increase their available technology. You'll be given one of these at the start of any engagement. All this equipment costs resources, and for that we have resource processors. These will teleport resources from crates and close up when under attack. They can also close up to move to new crates if the current crates are empty. Of course, very little of what we use in combat works in its own, so to facilitate human deployment, we have importers. These are climate control protected lobbies that receive fresh soldiers teleported from the capital ship to easily teleport them to your factories for equipping. Essentially a giant 3D printer for military hardware, the factory builds all basic vehicles for your army. Bear in mind that these are only big enough to build one vehicle at a time. Communication centers allow for improved coordination among your forces. With the added comm capabilities, your forces will be able to organize themselves more effectively. These centers will also act as watchtowers, providing an early warning for defense and spotters for artillery. 
Unlike the smaller factory, the Macrofab produces armor for our troops to pilot. Due to the larger size, the Macrofab can produce larger and more advanced vehicles than the factory. However, it still can only produce one vehicle at a time. The defense turret provides continuous protection against any incoming enemies, particularly any airborne threats that pass by. In addition, they can also detect cloaked enemies and remove those invulnerability shields I mentioned earlier. Oh right, you can upgrade these a bit like tanks, which are allowed to deal with artillery. This here is the most basic CISO teleporter. Just turn it on and set the destination, and when any of your troops come near it, they'll teleport automatically. These are wonderful little tools for deploying to the front lines in a hurry, and they can relocate if necessary. This here is a good old fashioned field teleporters, long range brother of the slingshot. They can teleport any of your troops to pretty much anywhere on the battlefield. They aren't automatic though. Now I'm sure you've heard about the recent experiments with time travel. The lab people tell me it's perfectly safe, so long as everyone follows this big precaution list they've got. I'm sure you got the hang of it pretty quickly. I'm told it's like a teleporter for time. That doesn't sound so dangerous to me, and it's one more tool to well advantage, so don't feel scared about using it. That about wraps up this little presentation. It'll take some getting used to commanding these forces, but if you've gotten this far, you'll be able to get it soon enough. End transmission.